Today I'm starting my look off using the James 3-in-1. This is the Rose Souffle. Now it's a mask but it's also a moisturizer as well so you can use it many different ways. I've been using it like a really nice um, moisturizer like it's really quite thick. You can leave it on for 20 minutes if you wish but my skin just seems to drink this product in beautifully. Now don't mind my hair. I have work this morning, um, I have a makeup job to do, and it's at a hair salon, so I kind of wanted my hair to look okay. <laughs> but if I clip it back like this, it actually allows these curls to curl naturally, and then hopefully I get a bit of lift. So we will soon see if this works out at the end. <laughs> Another James Cosmetics product, this is their Lift and Firm Eye Cream. Now, this is pretty groovy, so you need to squeeze a bit up to the top. So I'm just going to concentrate on that. And then you must make sure your fingers are here when this touches under here. Now, I don't think you can hear it, but it makes like a little buzzing sound. And it sort of vibrates underneath this eye area. It's really gentle. It's not um, harsh at all. And I just gently sort of move that back and forth and let that sort of settle in. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see like a bit of a difference and I'll go on here as well. So that's quite nice. It smells beautiful as well. So I don't know if it looks a little bit more lifted. I think it does actually. So just giving that a nice little massage and I'll do the other side as well. Same thing, make sure the two places have contact to the skin. I like to sort of get the product on and then I like to massage that in. Um, and I'm trying not to drag, like I think your natural response is to start sort of really working it in, but I think you just need to let this little vibration do its thing um, underneath there. It feels really quite nice. Here it's a new product for you. So today I'm going to use the Revlon Colorstay. Um, two reasons. One, because I left my sunscreen over in my bathroom and I can't bother to go and pick it up. So this one has at least an SPF of 10. So not great, but still better than nothing. So I'm using this one today for coverage and also for a little bit of SPF. I am actually working inside. so. As it is a full coverage, I'm not going to go too heavy handed. I would like this to be um, more of a medium coverage. So I'll just do a light um, sort of amount on this. And because that um, moisturizer underneath is so thick, I'm kind of hoping it's just going to mix in and be a bit more of a tint rather than really heavy. So. But as you can see, it does cover really well. Um, I'm just going to make sure I get my jawline over the ears, just the residual. A small amount really does go a long way with this product, especially when you're trying to make it more of a medium coverage. So I'm blending that right in and using every little bit. Um, and just making sure that it's sort of mixing in with that um, moisturizer as well. It's gonna go under the eyes. So that's actually worked quite well for me as like a medium, medium coverage. Going to use the MCO Beauty. So I like to have a few dots here, a couple quite high because I like to create lift. A little bit on the jawline where the jowls are same on the other side and I'm just placing little dots. I'm also going to do just down the nose so really fine. I like to do the nub as well. When I work the contour in I really just press it because this is exactly where I'd like that product to go so I don't want to shift it around too much. Um, Sometimes with my hairline, especially because it's getting a little bit grey through there, it can pick up the colour. But once my fringe comes forward, it's not so noticeable. 
So same here, this is high, normally we, contour, we used to contour down here. It's nice to have it nice and high because this will create lift in your face. So once again, just pushing it in, the bulk of the product exactly where I want it, back into that hairline. Same here, this is to sort of really chisel off that jowl and make it look a little more um, like toned and sharper. And I just press that in. And once I've pressed it in, then it doesn't matter if you give it a bit of a sweep and a blur, you know, so that you aren't sort of creating those lines that you don't want. Same on this side, just pressing it in. And this is where you can decide, you know, like that's disappeared quite well. And that's what I want. I want it nice and subtle. However, if you've decided, oh, you know, that's not enough for me, you can actually go back in and do the, repeat those first few steps with your contour and add some more just to sort of build it up. This way, it's like trial and error. You can really decide what's working for you. Now on the nose, you should use a more detailed brush, but I'm a little lazy. And this works as long as you don't get the middle of the nose that you keep on the side. But this will work. <laughs> just make sure you don't get down the middle. And that just leans the nose out a little bit. Today I wanted to try another product, um, another e.l.f. eyeshadow. These ones are great, they're really cheap little eyeshadows. It's called the Bite Size and this one's in rose water. And I just need to um, open it, so I might do that off camera. Oh no, it's working. And I'm thinking of going into, you can see, I'm going to start with this shade here to see how that goes. And then it looks like the rest are all shimmer. So I'll go easy because I am going to work. I don't want to have a full on shimmer makeup, but I will start with that one. Before I do that, I'm just going to comb these eyebrows. They're doing my head in, just watching them like make my eyes look droopy. So <laughs> whatever you do, if you do nothing with your brows, just comb them. It just makes the world of difference. I'm going to take a large fluffy brush and then just sweep this cult color all over the mobile lid because I think it's going to be quite nice yeah it's a very mushroom or taupe it's very light but perfect for what we want we're just going to create a bit of a base it's created a small amount of shape there um, I'll concentrate a bit more in the crease but that's a really nice really lovely base shade kind of like more of a mushroom shade or even mauve uh, but very light so sweeping that through I like these little bite size um, eyeshadows because really easy to take with you if you're traveling and then you can have a couple of different colors for different looks I tend to usually only have like two different sort of shades I either go warm or cool so today this is looking a little more cool. Okay, so I'm going to use my finger and swipe that rose color. And I would like to place this on the mobile lid. And I'm sort of going not all the way in because I know there's another shade in this palette. I'm going to keep it sort of in the middle just to really bring the eye forward. Same on the other side. So that's fairly simple, especially with the finger. I think sometimes it just works. And then like that. Using the finger again, I swapped fingers just so we don't have extra color. I'm going right into that inner corner. It is a little bit harder to do that. And I'm using that lighter shade in this palette, trying to keep it right in the inner corner and not underneath there, if that makes any sense. Now, because this last shade here is a darker shade, I am going to take a brush and it has got shimmer. Preferably for me, I prefer to have a few more mattes or equal palette with equal matte to equal shimmer. Um, just so I can put a matte through this crease. But let's just, you know, trust the process. Bear with me. I'd like to stick it right on this outer corner and a little bit along that lash line. Just to sort of use it a bit like eyeliner. And same, I'm going to run it underneath ever so slightly. 
Then just grab like a blending brush and what you want to do is just take that product and push it towards the inner corner. Staying in this crease, at, just at the minute, just stay in the crease. I just want to see what it looks like. And then same underneath, give it a little run along. So you don't mind that. Same on the other side, just placing it in that outer corner and up into that crease ever so slightly. And then I'm grabbing a little bit more and I'm going to go along that lash line, just on that sort of outer quarter, not all the way in. It will depend on where your eyes are and your face shape to how far in you go. Um, as a little rule of thumb, if your eyes are very close set, I wouldn't go all the way in because you'll bring them closer together. If your eyes are wide set, then you can go in. Um, if your eyes are wide set, I wouldn't just stick out to this outer corner. I'd bring them in a bit more. Um, and this just helps to place the eyes more in the center of the face. Once again, I've just swapped brushes. Um, a fluffy brush and just work that in towards, and you're sort of always sweeping from where the bulk of the product is, sweeping towards the nose. So just in and then a little bit on that brow bone. And then again, same in here. And you kind of want to sweep that bottom sort of rung in, rung, line in so that it doesn't just sort of stop. You, you sort of want it to like just blend out. If you want to go a step further, you could take like the lighter shade and add it to it so it does sort of just graduate into a lighter, a lighter shade. I'm just going to give that a bit more of a contour. I quite like these shades. Very pretty. Then I'm just going back in with that first shade, which is that mushroomy shade, and I'm just going to sweep it through the crease and onto this brow bone, just to create a little bit more lift and really make it look like you've got your blending down pat. And it just sort of graduates that shade, so it goes from light to dark to light, and it just looks like you know what you're doing. My mascara of choice at the moment is the Rumi Cosmetics. This one is a volumizing mascara. I really like the way it goes on. Um, it's easy, it kind of coats each lash really well. Um, and it lasts, it really lasts all day, it doesn't smudge, doesn't come off. But then it's tubular, so you just sort of peel it off in the shower. Um, but I find I can wear this, do a gym workout, do a sauna or an ice bath or something and it's still still there and just the other side so when I say ice bath I don't actually go under but you know what I'm saying is you it really does last last the day so I like to shimmy my lashes along a little bit try and coat each one so they're not all clumped together um, sorry it's hard to do this camera. Now I'm just going to add some color to the brows. This is the e.l.f. Cosmetics. This is a really cute little applicator. I always love to do the outer corner first because sometimes, like today, I feel that's enough. Otherwise it just gets too heavy. Um, and if our brows are too dark or even too sharp in their shape, it can be quite hard and also quite aging so all about minimizing that over your brows today i want to show you how um, i do a little bit of like highlighting on the face but using the concealer so there's a couple of points where you can place this that can really create some lift so what we want to do is we want to go through through here and through here through here a little bit through here, here. So it's all creating lift. Same on the other side. So you're just sort of creating a line that goes from here. You're kind of watching where this arch is up here. A little bit through there, lifting up the corner of the eye, lifting up here and here. Now we'll blend them in. Just using a smaller brush to blend this in. Because 
we really just want it to get, again, a bit like when we did the contour, we want it to sort of stay exactly where we've placed this because that's where we want that lift. A little bit under the eyes. I don't like to do too much under the eye, but I did find that a little bit of that um, shimmer came under the eye and that can be quite detrimental. And then just bringing this up. This is also a great way to help clean up the eye area. From here, so just blending it all in. And we'll come back over with um, the conceal, uh, conceal, the foundation brush and just blend it properly in. But as you can see, that's really created a nice bit of lift to the face. So these are all these little tricks that you can do and they don't need to look one too scary or too obvious. So once I've blended this in, I will come in with that larger foundation brush and just make sure that it isn't too obvious. Blend, blend, blend. It's a good place to place it. And then this corner of the mouth here, this really helps to create that sort of carve out those cheekbones. Also place a small amount down the nose so yeah just down the nose as well because that'll help emphasize that contouring we did earlier and on the cupid's bow there now i'm just going back in with that really nice foundation brush and just making sure that it's really seamless you know um just patting it in making sure we're not creating you know, these big white lines on our face. Because we don't really want people to know that this is what we've done. Just want it to look really natural. For the cheeks and lips today, I'm using one of St. Renee's um, Lip and Cheek Tints. I love products that do a double duty. This has got a bit of a pink tint, and I thought that would go really nice with the cooler tones. So again, I like to do that two finger rule getting myself back to front and place it quite high on the cheeks so it seems like it's high but this way we're not coming too low and it avoids it dragging the face down so sometimes if you put your blush in and you pop put it like you're smiling away and there's your apples and you put it all over here but as soon as you stop smiling it, down it goes so it's really dragging the face down so this way we're creating lift I just use like one of these brushes here, it's got a nice little angle and I'm just, once again, that same technique of this is where I wanted it, like I've placed it where I wanted it, just going to press it in and then bring that residual up, again creating that lift in the face. Same on the other side, so just stamp it in and then sort of bring it up. So we want the bulk of it there, but it's really nice to have that flush coming up near these temples. This is just so pretty and just makes it look very natural. And you can stamp it over the nose if you wish. Nothing complicated with the lipstick today. Uh, I'm just putting it on. So nice and simple, really brings the look together. As you may notice in a few of my tutorials, I love following like a creamy blush with something that's powdery in a very similar tone. I love this one, this is the Candy Blush by Pony Cosmetics, and you've got quite a graduation, so you've got a few different colors to play with. We're going to go into the lighter pink, so I'm just really sort of being careful where I'm placing that, and I just want to put a small amount on the very top of this cheek. Yeah, very small and close to the temples here. The reason why I'm going close to the temples is I'd like to get another brush and I would love to place a small amount through the socket line. Now for me, I feel very similar to what we did before with the graduating colors, but I love this look. I'm just adding like building this up because it just brings the eyes, the cheeks, the lips. It just brings it all together and looks really cohesive. And it looks like you know what you're doing with your colors and your blending. So I really hope you like this look today. 
Let me know your uh, thoughts. Let me know if there's anything that you would like to um, learn or if there's something I've missed that you think I should do. I'm going to take these out, uh, show you <laughs> show you if this has actually worked um, without pulling my hair out at the same time. Oh my goodness. Yep, we did. We missed some hair. Okay. I don't need to lose any more hair. Okay, so the, the theory is... Oh, there's another clip. I wonder what it's doing back there. So the theory is that this will just give me a really nice bit of face framing. Eyes and not too bad. But while it's done that, I've managed to sort of keep the curl in. Um, quite often when I put my hair back in the headband, sort of just starts to destroy my curl. So there we have it. Let me know what you think. Love to hear your thoughts.